Hey what's up guys, the past few months I've been working on my water cooling, my first PC, uh, which is 11 years old now, um, and it's the first purpose-built gaming PC that I, I owned, and that I still have, so um, it's very important to me, so I want to look it beautiful again, um, and I decided to go for a Resident Evil team, uh, and I decided to water cool it, of course, because I want to experiment with water cooling, but I don't have the balls to do it on my expensive PC. So uh, that's why I went with me old PC. Um, so first, I benchmarked everything on like with the air cooler, and I transferred it to the new case. And so we first have to remove that cooler and put in the water cooling, or at least that way we've got something to compare it to to see if the temperatures are any better or worse. Um, the reason I went with Resident Evil, by the way, is because I really love these games. I've been playing them for a long, long time. I really like the movies as well, and also, like, it's quite suitable because you can buy reservoirs with a helix in it, either the T-virus or the antivirus, so green for the virus, blue for the antivirus, um, which is what I wanted to use as well. I decided to modify the case I had, which is an old case, um, and to drill holes in it and to make the reservoir outside, because I wanted you to see the reservoir and the inside of the PC wasn't very interesting because it's really old hardware. Uh, it's got spaghetti tables, like it, ugly as hell cables, you don't want to see those. Um, the hardware in itself, it's not very big or beefy, so it's not pretty to look at. I mean, the motherboard is red. Um, it's got a lot of different colors on the motherboard itself, which isn't very pretty. Um, it doesn't have those beautiful gaming heat sinks like today's motherboards have, so that's why I wanted the beautiful things outside and more like... A hidden but still see-through window um, so I've got um, a tinted window on the PC and I will have some LEDs in there so it's at least it's a bit pretty um, so yeah I'm putting on the water block right now as you can see putting on the fittings for that like the treading I'm gonna have to reapply the thermal paste as well Okay, there's the thermal paste. Now let's get the cooler on, the CPU block. Um, it was quite hard to find a CPU block, by the way, because like uh, for modern hardware, you can find plenty of things. So if you've got like the modern Intel chips, like that use an LGA uh, 1151 socket, for example, you can find plenty of water cooling blocks for that thing. But um, for this, which was an LGA 775. There's no way you're gonna find a water block in this, like from EK or any other normal brand. So I went to China. Like I didn't physically go to China, but I went to a Chinese website and I bought it from China. So this is from a water Chinese water cooling brand called Barrow or something, and um, it looked pretty good, as you can see. It looks pretty good quality. It's got some heft to it as well. It's got micro channels, so um, I, I think it will be fine. And uh, the treading works. As you can see, the fittings and everything are from China as well. The only thing that's not from China is the pump, because I did buy a pump from China, but it didn't work, and I really didn't feel like waiting for another one. So I went from a pump from EK Waterblocks, which was literally the pump alone was more expensive than the rest of the entire water cooling from China. Um, but yeah. Uh, I had to get the graphics card out, as you just saw by the way, because I was um, screwing in the vans on the radiator, because, but like the screwdriver is too long so I couldn't actually fit it in with the graphics card in there, so I had to remove it. And, uh, that was a big problem with Chinese products as well, like usually it works but the quality isn't too good. With this radiator for example, like the radiator is good, no problems there. But like, um, first of all, the paint job isn't too good, so like some parts aren't painted. That was really ugly, so I did uh, redo the painting on the outside, but I can't paint the fins, like the cooling part, sadly, so that doesn't look too pretty. But luckily, it's more like, um, only on some of them, so you don't see it too much. Um, but like, the main problem with that Chinese reservoir is the treading. Like, I treaded it once, with, like, I used the screws that came with it. And I ruined the treading because like it, it was already like not good. 
but like I took them out and then I couldn't even put them back in again because the threading was ruined. Um, but yeah, I threaded them with a threading device which I have luckily so um, I managed to get new threading in there which works and that's how I managed to put it in. So in putting in the tubing I had several layouts but I'm going um, pump to the CPU block, CPU block to the radiator, radiator to the reservoir outside as you see now and then it goes back inside from the reservoir all the way to the pump. Now originally I planned to have like a T-splitting tool and to have like a drain valve and everything so it could easily drain the system but um, like the valve hasn't arrived yet and I've literally done more than two months of waiting on every part so I can't be bothered to wait for that part. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to build it, I just wanted to get it over with. Uh, because I've had a lot of bad luck with shipping as well. Because I also ordered like um, uh, a filling bottle and stuff like that. Never arrived or it still hasn't arrived. It still can of course, it still has time but like I can't wait for it. And um, the postal services, the local postal services managed to damage some of the goods and like lose some of the fittings and stuff like that. So it's been absolute hell uh, in terms of uh, delivery of all these these parts. But yeah, they're all here and they work. So and luckily I've, I ordered more than I needed. So I've got plenty to make this work. Now with this reservoir, that was quite a painful moment because originally I was putting this in and I was just, I went for soft tubing because that's easier and it's my first time doing water cooling anyway. So I thought I could make the bend like to outside but the soft tubing kinked when I did that because the bend was too short. So I had to order a 90 degree fitting which obviously resulted in a lot of more waiting which is why it ended up taking two months before I finished this build. Um, the umbrella logo you just saw by the way, the way I made that was just cutting triangles and painting four triangles red and four white and then sticking them onto my case. I made that from a scrap piece of wood, so that was uh, pretty nice. Here we're going to the, uh, to the pump, as you can see from the reservoir outside to the pump inside. Okay, you can see the hard drive there by the way. That hard drive is not the original hard drive from this PC. This is an even older hard drive because uh, the original hard drive was a 500 gigabyte uh, Barracuda drive. It still works perfectly, but I don't want to, uh, like I, I had to put Windows 7 on because I mean, I need a proper operating system and stuff like that. But I didn't want to like wipe my old drive because I really like that one because it still has stuff from my childhood on there and stuff. Um, and it still runs on Windows XP originally, like originally, so I really like that one. So I used an even older drive from a PC that I had, which was uh, 16 or 17 years old. And that's like 160 gig, so it's not much, but it's plenty. So yeah, now it's finally time for the filling, which is the most satisfying part of the build, because like putting it all together is nice, but since the hardware isn't that impressive, it's all about the water cooling and filling this thing up is like the moment of truth. You can see if there are any leaks or if this actually is going to work at all or if the loop is planned perfectly because if it isn't it's not going to work either. Um, so my technique was just fill the big reservoir outside because um, I could easily get to it and then it would flow to my pump reservoir combo from EK and I would have to like open the cap on that uh, pump reservoir uh, to fill that reservoir because otherwise um, it wouldn't and due to the gravity it would just push the water in there. Um, you gotta be really careful with this because you don't want to overflow it inside your PC of course. It's right next to my power supply. But like the reason I went for a pump reservoir combo by the way is also because like um, I had to buy one anyway, a new um, pump and if I bought them in Europe they were very expensive so pump reservoir combo at least um, has more chance of surviving because a pump may never run dry when you run it and you're going to have to actively fill it later on so fill it with the pump running and with a pump reservoir combo you at least have a little more like headroom to screw up because 
it's got a backup reservoir next to my big Resident Evil reservoir from which it can drain water so the chance of it running dry is very very low. Oh, by the way, you see it leaks sometimes when I uh, pour water into the reservoir. The reason why is because there is like a ring on top of the helix that sits like um, perfectly level with the the intake so from where I'm pouring it in. So if I pour too fast and it doesn't drain into the reservoir it just comes out and that's why it's leaking sometimes. Um, and obviously at that point after two months I didn't have much patience so that's why it went wrong the first time. <laughs> But yeah, as I said, the, um, the filling bottle that I ordered hasn't come yet. It should come next week. Otherwise, I don't know what they have done with it, eaten it or something. But <laughs> I was using an, um, an oil flask from Spain, which was a gift to me from my mother when she went to Spain. Um, but like it never had any oil in it or something. It was perfectly new. It's made of glass. And um, it's actually pretty good for filling this thing. It really helped. <laughs> It's a lot better than just pouring it in there because I've got like these um, five liter uh, distilled water tanks. That one you saw me f uh, refilling the oil flask with sometimes. Uh, but like uh, the first time I did this, when I tried it outside my case to see if it actually leaked or not, I was literally pouring it in with that thing, and that is not the best way to do it. As you can see, the reservoir on the pump is pretty much full right now as you can see which is really really nice which means it's basically just filling the oil reservoir and the rest of the sim the system so in a bit i will have to like, i will fill the reservoir like full now and then i will turn on the pump um so it water will go to the cpu block and also to the radiator which is even higher than the reservoir and then i will have to fill it while it's pumping the water around because the reservoir will empty down, of course, because of the um, all the water being pushed to the CPU block and the radiator. So once the entire system is full, I can finally close it and then it's done. But yeah, I'm gonna have to fill the reservoir first and then actively fill it. Um, I'm gonna actively fill it, by the way, with an auto power supply because I use the power supply from the same old PC that I took the other hard drive from and the reason I'm not using the power supply in my case is because it's um, easier to have the wiring in your PC done and you can't turn it on when that is the case because you don't have any cooling yet so you can actively fill it with another power supply which is way easier because then you can easily turn it on and off, on and off, on and off without ruining your own hardware because it's not connected to a motherboard, to a CPU or anything only to the pump so it just turns the pump on or off you can see now I just turned the pump on by the way and it's flowing from the reservoir <laughs> problem is that I was on the other side so I couldn't see how much I still had left so I quickly had to stop it when you stop the pump by the way due to gravity a lot of it will come back as you see it will just go back into the reservoir and uh, go down from the radiator so I'm gonna fill it again like not actively this time and next time will be active when it's like running and then I will start filling with it. Whereas otherwise you can't get the entire system full and um, the reason why you want that full is not that it's that much necessary but if the reservoir is like only halfway full you will get like a difference in color and the way it looks and everything of the reservoir and especially if you use that system like a long time you will see eventually there will be a ring where the water ends and like I don't know if growth or I don't know what it is but like it will end up being there because and that doesn't look really good I mean you can clean it off but it's really hard so it's like better to have it that ring above into the parts that you don't see anyway and this also ensures that water doesn't vortex in your system but it's like 
going nice and smoothly training. Because you will see in a bit that it does vortex if I uh, turn the pump on higher. But it won't do that if it's perfectly full. full. You can see the pump is running now. Now I'm going to go for the active filling of the loop. Um, as I said earlier, that like um, circle that is on the helix, on the end of the helix, which makes it difficult to fill really fast, is also the problem right now. Um, it is also already water pouring on that oh, on that circle. So I have to pull really carefully to not overflow uh, the reservoir. For those wondering, by the way, this is only the distilled water I'm pouring in right now. I do have like uh, cryo fluid from um, EK as well, which is a lot better in terms of cooling, and it does it does have anti-growth stuff like so. Nothing will grow in there in the water. Um, but the first time I pour in uh, like distilled water, and only the second time if I notice like oh it doesn't leak after 24 hours or something and it works perfectly so it can run um, then I will fill it with the um, EK cryo fluid but <laughs> for this video you won't be seeing that of course because uh, you already see me filling it and it's pretty much the same process all over again By the way, when I tested the PC, when I benchmarked it um, with the air cooling, the temperatures were in the 40s, uh, like in the 40s at, at idle and in the 60s when under 100% load, like with Cinebench. Um, so that's also one of the reasons, by the way, I had to upgrade the operating system. I needed a 64-bit operating system to be able to use uh, benchmarks like Cinebench. And, um, like with the water cooling uh, when I tested it outside the case it was in like the 4 is maximum when under 100% load so that was really really good um, as you can see it's vortexing a bit by the way the water and the pump goes really really hard and this is also a reason you want um, a big reservoir if you have a big system where you have to pump really hard you want a big reservoir because if that vortex with air basically reaches your pump your pump is running dry even though there's lots of water above it it's still running dry so that's not really good so you don't actually want a vortex even though it looks cool <laughs> um, the reason I was running it really hard at this point though is because I that is just to fill that extra little layer on the active filling so you could just pour a little more uh, fluid in there than without um, setting the pump to its maximum but doing normal operation you won't have it on its maximum speed. So here it is, it turned out beautifully if I say so myself. Um, I added the LEDs as you see, 
to the um, between the wooden side panel with the reservoir and the umbrella logo and the metal one as you can see here from the side um, and I added Chinese LED fans which were really really cheap which I bought because uh, to help cooling to provide airflow through the radiator for those wondering I did add custom sounds to this PC because um, I really like Resident Evil but I wanted the theme to be carried to the PC when using it as well So when you start up the PC, it says Resident Evil. I will show you in the video and you probably won't be able to hear it very well. So I will add the sound file. Resident Evil. Um, I've got, like, I changed a lot of the system notifications as well. Like for example, um, if you plug in a USB, it gives like the uh, um, noise of a door opening which you hear very often when playing Resident Evil because there's a lot of doors to open and when you um, remove the USB you will hear like the door closing stuff like that and, um, I added a lot of details like that to this PC um, you can also see the umbrella background and for those wondering yes this thing can actually run Resident Evil games so um, not the newest of course but it can resident, uh, run Resident Evil uh, Remastered and this is Resident Evil Zero Remastered I was able to run those even though I checked the minimum requirements and it said like uh, a dual core at 2.4 GHz which is basically what I have in terms of a CPU and in terms of a GPU it's uh, a GTS uh, 260 I believe it was and I have a 430 which is um, less good a GT430, not a GTS, a GT430. So, um, but yeah, it still manages to run it. Not at the highest resolution, of course. I'm gonna show you how it runs. Um, the resolution I was running, I believe, was uh, 1280 by 1024 or something, something like that. But yeah, it's running, it's running pretty sweet, uh, smooth. Let me skip the story. Mm -mm -mm. As you'll see in a bit, it does uh, get my CPU at 100% load, but due to the water cooling, that doesn't really make it hot and it's not really loud. The loudest thing in this system is actually the old hard drive, which is like uh, making noises when it's under load. So <laughs> that is the loudest thing, but for the rest, it's like really, really quiet. The fans are um, off almost most, like most of the time due to it, the temperatures being so low and as you can see it runs it all right for some reason like the scaling doesn't always work sometimes it's, it's it's smaller than a monitor as you can see now and sometimes it's like the same size as you saw in the beginning when I was starting up the game and stuff like that like changes that in while in game randomly sometimes as well so not sure what causes that but it works as you can see I can shoot zombies I can run around <laughs> can reload no problems no glitches no uh, nothing runs pretty smoothly um, it's about about 40 FPS so it's not really fast but I mean smooth enough uh, uh, everything above 30 is fine by me so <laughs> it's good enough So yeah, that is pretty much this PC build. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time.